What is up everyone? My name is Abhas, your Protopie expert, and welcome to another episode of Ask Protopie, where we answer questions that you ask us. Today's question comes from Tushti, who asks us to share a few tutorials on web transitions and animations. She shared a few examples, such as this one. This is a website for cred. And let's take a quick look at this. And as you can see, as I scroll down, there's this animation happening. Uh, not much going on here or here. But there is this thing here where if you scroll vertically, you also see horizontal transitions. And the page is kind of stuck in one position. And a little bit of kind of like a parallax effect here. And that's pretty much it. So let's learn how to make these and a few more things. Let's take a quick look at what we're planning to make at the end of this session. We will have a website that animates like this when you load. And then as you scroll, you see more animations. And then as you continue scrolling, page is stuck in one position. There's this horizontal scroll thing going on. A little bit of parallax. And finally it ends. So since these are quite a lot of things, I'll break down this tutorial into smaller parts and you can pick up pieces and go through all of them at once as well and check out how to build this final finished product. All right, so let's begin with part one. Now let's take a quick look at the file that we'll be working with. In this file, there's no triggers or responses added yet. I have added a few sections, area one and two and three and four, each correspond to these different areas here. And these are the four main areas on the website. And, and since this is a website, we'll be going with an artboard size of 1280 by 1024. All right, in part one of this tutorial, we'll be doing the intro animation, which is what's gonna appear when the web page loads. So let's take a look at what we'll be building. It's going to be something like this. When your web page loads, all the elements fall into place. To do this, let's start by adding a start trigger. The start trigger comes into effect as soon as the prototype loads. This is perfect to simulate our web page loading. It doesn't require any other trigger or interaction from the user. Now we'll be doing something very interesting here. Since you can see that all the elements here are in their finalized, finished positions, what we'll do is move them to their initial positions, as in where they will be coming from, not where they're going to. So let's start by figuring out where this one needs to be at the start. It needs to be coming in here from the top, which is at a Y value of minus 96. So I'm going to go ahead and add a move and select the top header layer and then move it to minus 96. Next, I will also change its opacity to zero. And then I also want this text to fade in. So I'm going to make the opacity to zero. Like I said, we're changing these values to where they're coming from, not where they're going to. These are coming from an initialized position of zero. So it'll start from zero and then fade into place. So that's why I'm setting the opacity to zero. Same for these cards. I'll go ahead and select this first one here called shape A, and then press a response, and then add the opacity response, and make it zero. I'll go ahead and duplicate this one by pressing Command C and then Command V, and then Command V again. And now all I'll do is apply this to shape B and this one to shape C. Now all of them are going to an opacity of zero. For the final thing, I also want these cards to come in from a slightly lower point. So what I'm gonna do is also add a move response and then I can start by applying it to shape A. And then all I wanna do is move it by maybe let's say, a hundred pixels. So interesting to note that I've chosen move by instead of move to. Uh, when you specify move by, you're saying just move it down by a hundred pixels. If you wanted to move it up, you would have specified minus a hundred pixels. So yeah, I'm just saying move it down from wherever it is right now, downwards by a hundred pixels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this tr response here, press command C and command V, and then do it again, and then apply the same logic to shape B and then shape C. Now we want all of these transitions to happen before the user sees anything at all. We don't want them to actually move in front of the user. So 
since this is an initialization thing I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these and then add a duration of zero so they will happen instantly let's take a quick look at what we've done so far now when you see the page it's completely blank that's because all of the zero opacity responses and the move responses are happening instantly as soon as the prototype loads which is why you see nothing here but we do want to show this content to appear when the user loads the web page so for that we will add another start trigger we could have very well used it uh, used our responses in this one as well in this trigger as well but just for cleanliness and organizational purposes I'm gonna go ahead and add a second start trigger here because these guys are already in their finalized positions and we've manually moved them and given diff different opacity we can make use of a very special function called reset so I'm gonna go ahead and add reset what reset does is it will reset all the values that we've applied and bring the element back to its position as you see it on the artboard right now so in a way restore its original values so these are modified values that we put and the original values are as you can see them so reset will effectively just bring them back to its original position we'll go ahead and apply this to top header which will effectively move it down and give it some opacity I'm gonna go ahead and then copy the reset response and then paste it again and then I will apply it to inside the area one section hello this text and then I'm gonna go ahead and paste it again and this time I will apply it to shape A and then paste it again and then this time apply it to shape B and then paste it again and then apply it to shape C now all of these different values that we had modified are going to be restored to the to how you're seeing them right now on screen so let's see how this looks I'm gonna go ahead and reload the prototype here and now you see it's all happening at once we want to give it a little bit of transition so what we'll do is we will go ahead and uh, change all of these to let's say 0 0.5 seconds so it's a little bit more graceful you can choose any values that you like and then we will add like a little bit of delay so I want the hello to come in at around let's say 0 0.2 seconds and then maybe the first card shows up at 0 0.1 the second one shows up at 0 0.2 and the third one at 0 0.3 seconds let's see how this looks I'm gonna go ahead and restart the prototype there you go wasn't that easy as pie now you have a transition that appears as soon as your web page finishes loading let's take a quick look again and there you go so that's it for part one of this tutorial where we wanted to cover the first basic aspect of web transitions as soon as a web page loads in part two we'll check out how to make this happen when you scroll to a certain position on a web page all right see you in part two then